Welcome to all inspiring chefs, cooks, and everything in between alike. This is Griever, your guys' host as always, bringing you guys a yes, another one. I know I just watched and said, well, yeah, I'm going to try to catch up and blah, blah, blah. I had to just re-record episode five. This video, of course, will come out later on. Won't be, you know, back to back or anything. But I decided, okay, now that I re-watched episode five and I reviewed it, I'm going to watch episode six and I probably won't record it. But my God, yes. Samurai, Bushido, Saito Senpai. I loved all of it. I need to talk about it right now. So let's get into this episode review for episode six because this was really good. I firmly enjoyed. I have to try. Like, yes, did uh, did Soma's dish. All right, quick summary. Soma versus Saito. It's not extended like I thought. Beautiful visuals with the whole idea of them meeting as samurai in the Edo period of Japan or the Meiji era right before it or something like that. And being like, all right, uh, draw your blade, you know, and stuff. It's like, all right, who's going to draw their blade first? The first strike, you know, all that stuff. All the visuals are wonderful. I like the entire dynamic of the entire episode. Thought it was really cool. Loved it in the manga. Loved it here. Um... And we get Saito's backstory in this one. We understand that, you know, his mother was the famous sushi, or not a famous, but uh, owned a, a very popular little sushi shop. And he wanted to be like his mother and stuff. His mother went to work for the for the big guys, and they basically crushed her spirit and, cru like, made her slave over stuff. Didn't even let her touch the rice or the fish or actually work as a chef anymore. And so she ended up falling ill, and he was just like, nope, I won't have this. And he started, you know, deciding to train himself up to be a great sushi chef, and he cut down everyone. He won all the competitions. He was like, sushi, the, the fish is my blade, butter is my sheath, and I will create, always win with a single heavy strike of my blade. One blade, one strike, end. Soma's idea is, of course, that he cannot beat Saito with just his own blade. No matter how many times he tries, his blade is not as strong as Saito's. I like this as a concept. Soma isn't leveling up too quickly in this bout. He basically is admitting that if he did not use the other flavors, the other weapons that he learned throughout all the Shokugekis and all the people he's met and all the different flavors, he's pushing everything 110% into this. He's not just using his own strength, he's using other people's. Yes, I understand it's cooking and blah, 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 but the sentiment is there is that he knows that in a 1v1, he can't beat Saito in a true 1v1 with only his skill alone. He has to borrow and use the weapons and the skills and the things he's learned from not only from Megami and Takumi in this uh, team battle Shokugeki, but from Hayama, from people of the Polish Star Dorm, Alice, Ryo. He needs from all of them. He needs to, you know, and constantly just other flavors and other weapons and just keep hacking at him until he comes out the victor. This to me makes a lot of sense and it showcases that Saito is still way up. Like like he's close, but he's not quite there yet because no matter as, even in a mock Shokugeki against Mima, uh, Mima Saki, Mimasaka, you know, the copycat, you know, Mr. Tresu, uh, when he goes up against him in a Mach 1, he can't win with a single blade. He just can't do it. So using that um, analogy or that representation, he can't win. So that just proves that Saito is a stronger chef 1v1, utilizing the flavors and strength of other people. I just, I, I really liked it. I really liked it because this, it, yes, is it cooking? Of course it is. But it takes a certain element of that shonen battle thing, and it brings that out. And it's not really plot armor. It's more of a, okay, because he's not the final boss. We still have more matches coming up here. And in the end, he does win. Soma wins. I thought this was going for two episodes, but Soma wins at the end of the day. Hard won victory. You follow Bushido. Saito and Soma respect each other. Saito is probably... If not, all right, Ishiki is definitely my favorite. You know, I'm the head of the Polar Star Dorm. He is my favorite of the Elite Ten. But after that, 
It's Saito. Saito has got to be my favorite. I, I think Saito is fantastic. I always really like Saito and Megashima and, of course, Rindo. But, uh, yeah, Saito, just the respect, the Bushido and stuff. We don't really delve into why. I believe in the manga it was a little bit extended. Like, he wasn't really on the side of Azami administration, but then Azami came to him specifically. You know, they kind of talked and all this stuff, and he kind of convinced him that my administration is for people like your mother and stuff. A little bit of coercion going on. We only got a quick scene of that in this episode. I thought it was extended in the manga. It might not have been. Um, but it, I, I remember it making a little more sense. Like it wasn't just a couple of lines and boom. That's why I joined. Because some even ask Saito, why did you join a guy like you with such honor and such like, I'm, I'm a Bushido, I'm fighting for the week, I'm a samurai. Why would you join Central, which is trying to crush People who, you know, and uh, anyway, he just says, you know, because I, I follow Bushido and I believe that that's the way to do it. Um, he does win, but as I said before, I just, I want to try to make this. I mean, a little bit edited, of course, because it sounds uh, like pretty expensive, but I would love to try my hand at making this dish. The one that Saito made, not the one that Soma made, even though it won. The one that Saito made appeals to my seafood palate. All the salmon and the butter and the sushi rice and all that stuff. Yes. Mwah. Beautiful. Love that idea. I haven't really, you know, like, yeah, sure, Eisen's dish was, was pretty good. You know, I, lo I love beef. I love roast beef and stuff. Uh, in the last episode and such... Uh, pizza, I'm like a little bit of hit or miss. I got to be in the mood. I ate a lot of pizza as a teenager. And, uh, you know, now, like, that was always the party food. You know, everybody, let's order a pizza. Started to get kind of sick of pizza. You know, it's never anything new anymore. So, um, but it doesn't mean I don't enjoy pizza. Of course I enjoy pizza, you know. And, yes, pineapple can go on pizza. Don't care what, uh, you know, anybody else says. Uh, even though I kind of, I'm a little hypocritical about that because usually if someone argues, like, the way you know, the standard way, the traditional way, the classic way, that the way cooking is done. I always go to people like, well, Gordon Ramsay says this. Well, Gordon Ramsay also said pineapple doesn't belong on pizza, and I disagree with that. So it's kind of funny, you know. I'm a little hypocritical myself because I'll use, oh, yeah, well, the major chefs who run giant restaurants, they say that medium rare is the way to cook beef. So you people who cook it well done, you're wrong. Sorry. But then all of a sudden I'll, I'll ignore it when it doesn't suit my taste. So a little bit hypocrite there. Um, or a lot of one, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but no, seriously, this uh, this whole episode was really good. The sushi bowl and everything, I, I, I just really enjoyed it. I want to try that sometime. Of course, butter is always a big thing with... Uh, you always gotta, you know, fry up some garlic butter with your toast crisps and your, you know, you, you know, your baguettes and things like that, and with your pastas and stuff to really bring out some flavor and richness. Garlic and butter they go together like like no, nothing else. And here, you know, fish is seafood is a big thing with that too. Fried scallops and butter, you know, and, and shrimp and stuff like that. Nothing beats it. So I would love to try this dish. I really want to try to come up with a way to sort of get there, you know, just edit it a little bit, but now it's giving me the idea of how I can get there to make a, a rich, buttery seafood bowl. And I'd really like to, uh, I'd really like to try my hand at editing it and playing around with it. So that's really why I wanted to make this episode because it inspired me to go back in that kitchen and start cooking. So, and I wanted to really like, while I still have that feeling, that hype, that yes, guys, this show, if you guys have been following for four seasons, get in the goddamn kitchen. You must get in that kitchen. I know a lot of people say, you know, I'm not very good in the kitchen. Listen, there are a lot of things. I'm, uh, I don't know what word to use. I'm no beginner in the kitchen. I'm far beyond that. But there's still plenty for me to learn. I'm also no chef either. And I'm definitely no grandma who's had 45 years worth of cooking under their belt either. I would call myself adept in the kitchen. Is that fair? Middle of the pack, you know. I I know how to cook. I know how to do more than than a grilled cheese sandwich and fry an egg. How about that? I, I know how to do beyond that, um, you know. But I know how to make my own sauces and things like that. But there is still so much to learn and so many new techniques and new cuisines to try. I just 
when you have this hype, like this show should inspire you to start cooking more and go outside the box. Try something different. I'm constantly using things that other people go, what the hell are you doing? Uh, one time I did a charboiled steak, uh, st steak, steak in pickle juice. And you know what? If you like dill pickle flavor, that shit turned out pretty damn good. So you can always get different flavors and different things. Be adventurous. Be experimental. Play with different flavors. If you burn something, who gives a shit? If it turns out, tried to make a cherry sauce one time. It was rancid. It was horrid. Didn't mean I didn't try again. You know, I clearly didn't do the right thing. I added too much sugar. I didn't add enough sugar. Too many cherries. Not enough cherries. I, I burnt it. I, I didn't watch it long enough. There's a million things that can go wrong in the kitchen. The thing is, is that don't be discouraged when one thing goes wrong. I've burned plenty of stuff. I Actually, I don't burn very much nowadays. But I've burnt tons of stuff before. I've left pots on the stove. I've overcooked something. I've undercooked it. I've cooked stuff that in the end of the day, I put work and marinades and made all this stuff. And at the end of the day, it just didn't taste any good. You know, or not that even that it didn't taste good, but it feels kind of disheartening when you put all this effort into trying to make a new flavor and it comes out meh. Like you could have just taken it, salt, pepper, and fried it, and it would have been the same. You get disheartened. I understand that, but the idea is that the kitchen will constantly do that to you. This is a great representation of the Totski Academy. It is a representation of how a lot of people feel in the kitchen and why a lot of people don't cook or feel very pressured to cook for someone else. I constantly cook for my wife when she's here because she, even though she doesn't mind cooking and she can cook, she doesn't really love to try out the new thing. She, she doesn't get enlightened. She's not excited to try a new flavor or something. And she's always second guessing, what should she do? Me, I'm just always like, no, let's go for it. Let's do it, you know? I understand being hungry and stuff. You just gotta learn prep, but it's, I find that this show just showcases that. Like, Totski Academy is the representation of that pressure that people feel because you have to cook. If you're by yourself like I am, you have to cook your, for yourself, let's say, roughly at least twice a day, if not more. You constantly have to cook. And you don't want to survive off of, of packaged soups and bags of chips and, and, and uh, cup noodles and all that stuff and, and fast food. You know, sure, if you're living the dorm life and a teenager, that's fine. But if you want to cook, if you want to be healthy, if you want to be active, you want to learn a skill, you have to constantly be cooking for yourself and you're going to fuck up. You are going to fail. And it's okay to do that. Totski Academy is kind of like the no, you fail, you suck. However, I feel like Totski Academy showcases that pressure because that's how a lot of people end up feeling is that they get disheartened. I don't know how to cook. I tried these recipes. They took me three hours because I, I'm not, if, if you've never been in the kitchen, something that takes, you know, me or your mother or, you know, another chef takes us 35 minutes to prep and cook in the kitchen and do it easy. You've spent two hours. You're like, I can't spend two hours every day of my time just prepping and cooking and all this. This is exhausting. But you have to go through those stages. You need to constantly power through it. It's just like working out. It's like anything. You need to build up a routine. It takes something like 35, 40 days to build up a routine in your mind. But you can't take a break. You got to keep doing it. Keep doing I don't know why this turned into a positive like, go cook in the kitchen. Go work out. Be your best self you can be today. Vector cereal and all that stuff. This is not sponsored by Vector cereal. But uh, anyways, I, I just, I don't know why that kind of turned into this. But I feel like this this is what this show did for me. It, it always inspired me every time I read a new chapter, and this is why I'm very upset that it's really over, is that um, when I was reading it week to week, it always inspired me to try something new in the kitchen, and it kept me cooking a lot. So I hope, if nothing else, the manga is over, and if you've already read the manga stuff, at least like me, you're re-watching the anime or re-watching the story through the anime, um, and you're finding that passion too. I hope you find that passion for cooking, and I hope you, uh, I've convinced one person to just Get in that kitchen and just try a dish. Something simple. Something you've never tried before. Look up a recipe. Don't try to go at it, you know, just off, you know, your mind or whatever if you don't have that mindset yet. Just look up a recipe. The internet is there available. You don't even need to go purchase a cookbook anymore. You can just look up a recipe. What do you have in your freezer? What do you have in your fridge? What do you have in your cupboards? Look it up. You got, want a pasta? What do you got in the freezer? Do you have chicken? You have pasta? Perfect. Look up a recipe, a chicken pasta, and just try it. 
Maybe you'll have to go out and buy a couple of quick things, a few bucks, but won't you feel better for yourself for doing it? So this is my positive message from Gary here. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this has gone on long enough. Uh, this is a pretty, actually this review ain't too bad. We're coming up to the 15 minute mark, but either way, I just really wanted to, because this episode made me feel that way once I want to go and thaw some salmon and do it right now. It's a little late for that, but uh, you know, maybe tomorrow that's what I'll try. I'll try that making that bowl. And uh, will I screw up? Probably. Will it be too rich? Almost absolutely. But I want to try to make it. And then when I screw it up, I'll know what I did wrong, and then I'll do it better next time. And then you keep doing it until you perfected the recipe. Make it your own. It's always for the best. So anyways, guys, this has been Griever with your episode review and I guess a little bit of pep talk on the cook, uh, the cooking, the kitchen, whatever the, the methods. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the bell notification uh, in whichever corner. If you guys want to know every single time I drop a video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys like my content. And... Join the Discord, ladies and gentlemen. It's down in the description down below. It's where I am. It's where a lot of uh, great people are. We always talk about manga, anime, and everything in between. So uh, video games and uh, you know all that fun jazz. So what do you guys uh, what do you guys think? Do you love it? Do you hate it? This has been Griever with your showcase. You know some of the fourth plate episode six episode review. So we'll see you back here next time, guys. Peace. <laughs>